Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shivkumar and in today's video I want to continue with my BLDC uh, programming the electronic speed controller and talk about my progress so far. So in the previous video I basically drew the graph explaining you know how the BLDC motor works, the electronic speed controller to control the BLDC motor, how it works, the timing diagrams. And in today's video, I will try to show you my progress in the sense that how I programmed this particular aspect onto the microcontroller. And we'll try to see a little bit about how the timing diagrams work, what is the pulse width modulator, and uh, how we can control these pins through software. So let me show you my the software that I've written. So the software that I've written is to basically trigger these pulse width modulators and also to sense the back EMF. So, so far I have not really programmed the back EMF aspect of the software, which is basically uh, programming the analog digital converter and then sense the zero uh, crossing or perform an integration method to calculate certain the, the area. And once you have the area threshold, then trigger the next commutation cycle. But what I've done so far is to program the pulse width modulator and uh, talk about the different sequences of activation that is activating which MOSFET in order to perform certain uh, commutation and how I went about doing it. Now I did take a little longer than I should have and primarily being is because the chip that I'm using over here has uh, something called as uh, MCPWM which is motor control PWM and though I got it to work it wasn't as good as uh, just using just generic PWM and the reason why I was uh, struggling a little bit with the motor control PWM is I wasn't able to get the exact pulse that I wanted pulse width that I wanted the timing wasn't really working there was some scaling factor and I spent a little too much time to a point where I said I'm just going to use just normal PWM to get this working now motor control PWM does have couple of benefits in terms of it understands the sequence of steps and understands you know what MOSFET is for the high and the low and it's able to counter or cater to certain protection mechanisms so that you're not switching you know two MOSFET at the same time it's able to you know account for dead time it's got a lot of features specific for this type of configuration that's why it's called motor control PWM compared to just general PWM that just you know generates pulse width modulation and now I have to program it in such a way that it creates this type of commutation so uh, there were some advantages to it but I wasn't able to get to it working as well as I wanted it to get uh, wanted it so I just stuck to using the normal PWM um, properties of um, of the uh, microcontroller so in my particular in my in my code over here what I've done is I've initialized the pulse width modulation and uh, and once I've initialized the pulse width modulation let's see you know what we can do over here so uh, every one after every one second or so um, actually after every hundred hundred milliseconds uh, we have this blinking flashing light, light fly, flashlight over here and every time it blinks I've also tried to uh, create um, the commutation mechanism in that period so that's where we will go to the cystic timer which is called the cystic timer and in the cystic handler which is triggered every 100 milliseconds or so I have something called as a commutate function and the commutate function has got the six uh, levels of commutation which is basically the zero degrees the 60 degrees uh, 120 degrees, 180, 240, and 300. And these are the six combinations of commutation, whether you're co commutating the which MOSFET from phase A and which MOSFET from phase B, no, from which uh, high side MOSFET and which low side MOSFET from which phase is basically what the commutation mechanism is all about. And that's what we have over here in this code. So in when I go to say commutate, the commutate function, I have the six sequence, uh, which starts from zero to five. And what I have over here is uh, this is um, the D assert value is basically saying uh, D assert high side, which is going to keep it zero or low. And then we can assert the high side, which is basically trigger a P pulse width modulation. And the 40 is basically the pulse width modulation width. So it's 40%. And then we're deasserting certain low sides and, you know, asserting certain uh, low sides. So, we're, so this is what phase um, case A0 is basically. So in this particular thing, which is case zero, we're triggering phase a high side and face B low side. So that's what we have here. So we're assign, asserting the high side of phase A and we're asserting the low side of phase B. And similarly, I've done that for the second phase, uh, for the second commutation, which is at 60 degrees where we have high side A and a high side C. Uh, so we have over here high side A and then we have your high side C. And similarly over here, we have high side B and uh, 
high side of um, uh, low side of C. So high side of B and low side of C. And this is nothing but, you know, when you look at these uh, uh, MOSFETs on this side, uh, the high side is all the top MOSFETs and the low side is all the uh, bottom MOSFETs. And uh, these are the phase A, phase B, and phase C. Uh, and that's part of the diagram. All right. So let's see how it works. Uh, and similarly, I've done for the next commutation. The next commutation is commutation is figuring out, you know, what combinations we want to use. Now, the commutation will be based on which where the analog and digital converter sensing the zero crossing. And accordingly, we can we'll trigger that that commut computation. But as of now, I'm not implemented this part of the code yet. I've only implemented this part. And I'll just show you what we have so far. So this is my logic analyzer. Um, and I've triggered this code. Uh, so what I have over here is after I have um, programmed it, you can see that this is I've marked over here phase zero, phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, phase five, um, or rather the commutation zero, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. And let me zoom a little bit into the um, into this graph over here. Okay, so we have zero, four, five, six, zero, four, five, and zero. Four. Okay, okay. So now what we have is this is phase zero. So this part of the graph is very synonymous to this part of the graph. So phase A and phase B is high. So phase A and phase B is high. Um, and that will start somewhere exactly around here. All right. So this is phase A and phase C low side is high. Now we don't need to pulse with the low side. We can pulse with either one of the sides because current is just going to flow wherever there is on whichever mosfet is on so you don't have to pulse both the mosfets you can just pulse the high side mosfet and keep the low side mosfet just high it also is better in that sense because pulse width modulation can consume a little bit more power so if you if you have the least amount of uh, pulse width modulation uh, you can you know save a little bit on power so that's the reason why instead of pulse within every single mosfet i'm only pulse within the high side and and whenever it's and we're just keeping the uh, low side high if for that particular commutation period. All right, so that's what we have over here. So we have the high side pulsing. Now this looks very blurry, but when I zoom in, it's actually a pulse width modulation. And it's going at, on the right side over here, you can see uh, it explaining uh, on the left side, depending on where I put my mouse, you can see that it says the frequency is 20 kilohertz, the duty cycle is 40%. And that's what this 40% over here signifies. So this is that 40% that I've written um, on, on the code. That's a 40% duty cycle. Okay. So let's zoom out a little bit because it's going at 20,000. I mean, it's pretty fast, right? So let's try to keep this over here. Okay. Uh, 0, 4, 5, and 6. So similarly, I've done that for the second phase, which is um, the, the phase always, uh, or the, sorry, the, the second commutation always starts when the high side is switched, generally speaking. So we have this particular high side, and then this high side of phase B is switched, and then we go back to phase C, um, high side is switched. And the combination over here is that when the high side is high, you have uh, phase C high, phase C low side is high, and the um, for a particular piece of uh, for a particular cycle, and then we have um, the phase C uh, high side high, uh, and it's commutated exactly around uh, this particular sequence. So this is actually so we have here the first phase, uh, the first commutation, the second commutation, and the third commutation, fourth commutation, and the fifth commutation and the sixth commutation before this whole thing is repeated again. Uh, and that's what's happening away. So that's what I basically I've been working on. The next phase is going to be controlling the analog to digital converter and then figuring out the zero crossing and doing some integration method. And then hopefully I should be able to, you know, get everything working, configure it with the GD3000, then I start spinning the motor very shortly. I just, it has taken a little longer than I expected, primarily because I was playing around with different other, like, as I mentioned, the pulse motor control pulse with modulator and just trying to test, you know, how the code works. Um, but eventually I just, you know, settled with normal pulse with modulator and simulating um, this particular pattern. 
All right. So that's all there is to it. Um, my progress has been a little slow, um, but I should be hopefully be able to get it shortly working in the next, you know, couple of um, in a week or so. All right. Um, thank you all. And uh, if you like, uh, you know, uh, looking at my progress and once, you know, everything is done and working, I'll do a detailed video as to how the whole thing works. Uh, uh, and what are the mistakes that I made? What mistakes you might have when you make your own electronic speed controller? And what are the different algorithms you could use? Uh, how to, you know, in terms of power savings and, you know, what kind of feedback you can get and all the other cool stuff that goes into designing your own electronic speed controller. Uh, I'll talk more about that after this, uh, after I complete getting this whole thing working. Um, what pre drivers to select, whether this pre driver that I'm using is a good pre driver or, you know, are they better or cheaper pre drivers that, that are out there that I could use and things like that. Um, yeah, so thank you all and uh, please do subscribe, do like this video and until next time, stay safe.